Why, hello there. My name is Haley Marguerite, the children's author of the Charlie Takes an Adventure book series. I wrote my first book when I was just 11 years old in the sixth grade because of a language arts assignment project. Fast forward 13 years, when I was 24 years old, I published my very first book, Charlie Takes an Adventure. Today, you will witness the first book that I wrote, Charlie Takes an Adventure. Sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the book reading, Charlie Takes an Adventure. Written by myself, Haley Marguerite. Maybe one day, you will write a book about your adventures too. Once upon a time, there was an adventurous penguin named Charles Ignatius Adelaide. Sit right back and relax because I'm about to tell you a story of a penguin that we call Charlie. What is the penguin's name? If you said Charlie, you are right. Charlie lives in the ancient city of Erds. Erds is located in Antarctica, where it's extremely cold. Charlie's home is in a section of the, t of the town called Pickering Wharf. He doesn't like the wharf because he thinks there's nothing to do and no one to play with. Winter lasts a really long time in Antarctica. The days are really short and the nights are very long. It's so cold in Antarctica, if you're not careful, your eyeballs can freeze for real. Now, Charlie is a penguin, and he's supposed to like the cold weather, but Charlie doesn't like it at all. What is he supposed to do? If you think he's going to go to a warm place, raise your hand. Now, how many of you think Charlie might be visiting a cold place? Raise your hand. If you think a warm place, you are correct, boys and girls. So one day, while Charlie was waiting to get a haircut, he decided to look at some travel magazines that were left on the table. He grabbed a magazine that had palm trees and beaches on the cover. It was a travel magazine about Florida. I live in Florida. Who else lives in Florida? Raise your hand. Charlie read every word about traveling to Florida. It said, the weather is sunny and warm, the people are really nice, and there is plenty of things to do. After reading all the wonderful things about Florida, Charlie decided it was time for him to go. The very next day, Charlie set out in a plane to Florida where there's warm weather, plenty of activities, and a whole lot of people to be with. Shortly after Charlie took a seat in the plane, the flight attendant said, Everyone, please fasten your seatbelt. Okay, boys and girls, we are going to pretend like we're on this plane with Charlie. Now, you don't want to fly the plane, so I'm going to ensure that everyone is buckled up. Put that seatbelt on. Click. Charlie had never been in a plane before, he, and he wasn't sure what a seatbelt was. But Charlie watched their passengers and figured out how to put it on. Ten minutes after they were up in the air, the flight attendant spoke again. Snacks and beverages will be served in a few minutes. When she came with the snacks and beverages, Charlie had his headphones on and was listening to music. The flight attendant asked Charlie, What can I get for you? What do you think Charlie wants to eat on this plane? He responded, Fish. And the lady sitting next to Charlie with a pink polka dotted dress just stared at him for a very long time. Is that a very silly thing to order on a flight? I think so. When Charlie stepped off the plane in Florida, he thought to himself, Hello, sunshine. Can we all say hi, sun? The weather is sunny and warm, just like the magazine said it would be. Charlie then took a cab to the Palm Bay Hotel in Coconut Grove. As the porter helped Charlie with his bags, he noticed the bags were really heavy and had a horrible rancid odor coming from within them. That means they smelled really bad. So we are going to pinch our nose and say P.U. P.U. Oh, so gross. Charlie explained that they were full of raw fish, mahi-mahi sushi, his 
favorite entree to eat. He brought them with him from Antarctica. Unfortunately, the warm weather was not good for Charlie's food. We're going to say, poor Charlie. Later that day, Charlie decided to go to Miami Beach for a swim. When he arrived at the beach, Charlie observed a sign that read, Sea lice today, no swimming. We're going to say, poor Charlie. Charlie was a bit disappointed, but assumed to get at least lie down and get a suntan. Within minutes, the sky became dark and it started to rain like cats and dogs. We're going to say, poor Charlie. That night, Charlie thought it might be enjoyable to go to a party downstairs in the lobby of the hotel so he can spend some time with some new people. One of the reasons for Charlie's adventure was to meet new people, remember? Raise your hand if you like meeting new friends at parties. When Charlie arrived in the lobby, it seemed that everyone was so delighted to see him and this made Charlie smile. Can we all put on a big smiley face? After about 10 minutes of walking the party and mingling with the other guests, an elegantly dressed lady approached Charlie and asked him to bring her a Shirley Temple. Charlie had no problem doing this because he thought perhaps she admired him. Charlie thought to himself, this is great. Can we all give Charlie a big thumbs up? On Charlie's way back to the elegantly dressed lady with her glass in hand, three other people asked for the exact same thing. Charlie felt extremely happy and very popular. How many people? Asked Charlie. Three. That's right. Good job, boys and girls. When Charlie dropped off the last glass, the gentleman said to Charlie, It's always nice to have good help at these parties. Charlie replied, I'm not a waiter. I'm just another person here at the party. The man replied, You look like a waiter. You are wearing a tuxedo, aren't you? Charlie ran out of the party crying because he believed everyone was being nice to him because he was a guest. Not a waiter. We're going to say, poor Charlie. The next morning, Charlie set out for Happy World because it was the happiest place on planet Earth. He had read there were roller coasters. Raise your hand if you like roller coasters. Okay, every time the book has the word roller coasters, boys and girls, we're going to do this. Woo, woo, woo. Can we do a practice round? Let's do it. Woo, woo, woo. Mm, let's try it one more time. That was a little weak. Let's try it again. One, two, three. Woo, woo, woo. Perfect. Good job. So we're going to reread re that line. He had read there were roller coasters. Woo, woo, woo water slides, haunted houses, and plenty more fun rides. That place looks like so much fun. Charlie had purchased ticket and ran to go on the water slide first. It was wicked hot outside. Can we all put our hand in front of our face to cool herself down? So hot. Ooh. Cooling off on this ride would be ideal before hitting the rest of the park. Does that place look like a lot of fun, boys and girls? I think so. Charlie had waited in line for an hour and a half and was losing his patience, dripping with sweat. When he got to the front of the line, he was told by the man working there, the water slide just broke and needs to be fixed. It will be at least three and a half hours. Sorry. Come back later. Charlie was so disappointed. We're going to say, poor Charlie. Next, Charlie decided to go on the Outer Space Roller Coaster. Woo, woo, woo. Luckily, there's a much shorter line. Only a 15-minute wait on this roller coaster. Woo, woo, woo. Charlie loved roller coasters. Woo, woo, woo. The magazine said this roller coaster woo, 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 was the best one ever. 
When Charlie reached the front of the line, the person working there said, I'm sorry, sir, but you're much too short to go on this ride. You must be at least four feet tall to go on this ride. And Charlie was only two and a half feet tall. Unfortunately for Charlie, this happened every time he tried to go on a ride. We're going to say, poor Charlie. That is so sad. Disappointed, hot, and lonely, Charlie decided to leave the world's happiest place. As Charlie was driving away from the park, he noticed a sign in the road that said, Fortune Teller, all wishes come true. Who has a wish that they want to have come true, like granted? I do. Charlie parked his par car in the parking lot and walked towards the gate to the fortune teller's yard. He opened up the gate and walked through a garden which led him down to the path to the fortune teller. The fortune teller who called herself Maya looked up at Charlie and smiled and told him to sit down. Maya told Charlie with piercing eyes and asked him, What's wrong, dear? I need a person who can grant me a wish, said Charlie. It's very important to me. The fortune teller smiled and said, You've come to the right place. So, Charlie, how may I help you, asked Maya. Charlie told Maya, I left Antarctica to go to Florida because I was bored, had nothing to do, and no one to play with. And I had nothing to do. Maya looked into her crystal ball before she gave him this answer. Maya told Charlie about an old Slovakian proverb that goes like this. Do not look for apples under a poplar tree. Does any of you know what that might mean? I'll give you a few moments to figure that one out. Okay, so do you guys see these penguins right up here in Charlie's Think Bubble? Who do you think those penguins might be? Perhaps family members, right? Teachers, maybe a neighbor, a good friend. So what do you think that means? Do not look for apples under a poplar tree. Perhaps maybe you don't need to go far and wide to find out what you need in life, right? Charlie just sat there trying to figure out what that meant. After a minute or two, Charlie realized what Maya was trying to tell him. She was telling him that you do not need to go elsewhere to find what you need in life. You can find it in your own backyard. Oh, that's so cute. I love it. This made Charlie really happy because he knew what he had to do. I cannot waste another minute, Charlie said. I have to go back to my family and friends in Antarctica. Charlie immediately packed his bags and headed to the airport. The plane ride home was long. It takes almost 20 hours to get there from Florida. That's almost a whole day of traveling. How many hours are there in a day? Anyone get it? Oh, I think I heard it. 24 hours in a day. Good job. Charlie was so excited when the plane arrived at the Antarctica airport. Waiting for Charlie at the airport was his family and friends. Many held signs that said, Welcome home and we missed you. Charlie told his family and friends, I'll never leave you guys again. I missed you all so very much. Charlie's family and friends all gave Charlie a big group hug. Can we give yourself a big hug? This made Charlie feel very wanted and missed. When they were done with the group hug, Charlie told his mother he was hungry. It was a long trip, you know. Charlie's mom asked Charlie, what would you like to eat for dinner, my dear? What do you think Charlie wanted to eat for dinner? Fish! You're right. Absolutely. Charlie replied, well, fish! From that day forward, Charlie lived in Antarctica happily ever after with his family and friends. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. Hope you enjoyed the book reading, and have a wonderful day.